Okay, hi, this is Ron McKinney with Parada Photo. Um, I want to uh, welcome Jennifer Curry Wingrove here, our grand prize winner for our 2022 Parada Dance <laughs> Photo Competition. Um, Jennifer, why don't you like introduce yourself and talk about you know your journey as a photographer, your beginnings as a professional dancer, and uh, what kind of like brought you to this point uh, where you are today? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I was actually a dancer for most of my life. We'll say many decades. <laughs> um, I started um, as a student, of course, worked my way up through the junior company, uh, through the senior company of the California Ballet Company here in sunny San Diego, California, and then eventually became their principal ballerina. So all the roles that I ever wanted to dance, I actually got to dance and that was very much a dream come true after a lot of work, you know, sweat, blood, tears, the whole thing. But um, so that was pretty amazing. And, and through my career, um, I actually had uh, my mother uh, as the, the company dance photographer. So I would get to see her do her work behind the scenes, um, taking pictures of the, the company members for the programs, as well as the performances, so on and so forth. Um, and I actually grew up with a dark room in my, my garage and got to learn film along the way myself. So I, I started learning on film from, you know, cameras, based cameras, and we're going to have a cat come in here any moment. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's how it started. And then I took uh, photography back in high school, just for fun and entered into like the, the Del Mar Fair competitions and got a few awards here and there. And, and then, you know, as I started dancing more and more, it was kind of something that was, you know, not so much in my, in my life as much. Mm -hmm. Um, towards later in life, uh, whenever I had a chance to be backstage with a camera and I wasn't worried about doing a principal role, I would just take some fun pictures backstage just to, you know, just as something to keep me occupied when I wasn't dancing um, and loved it. And it was something that I held on to. Um, and then upon retirement of my ballet career, which was around 40, um, I had opened up a Pilates studio and in my studio, I had vaulted ceilings and decided to put just for fun, a backdrop up between clients or after clients and would bring dancers in to start doing portraits. And back then I did, I had like, I had archaic lighting. Like it was, it was not real lighting whatsoever. It was like, like those big lights you could buy at Home Depot, you know, right, and like right. put it up against a ladder and just was like trying to experiment with that. And, and how, um, how, long ago, how long ago was that? That was back in, let's say I opened the studio in 2010. Okay. So 2010 is when I started doing portraits uh -huh. in the studio and trying to figure out, you know, and I, and I would look at these portraits and I knew, you know, I had these amazing dancers, but I thought, God, you know, what, what am I, what, what am I doing wrong? Well, how can, besides the fact that I had, you know, lighting that wasn't the best, but it just, you know, where to put those lights, how to make the dancer look the way you wanted a dancer to look and it was it was a you know it's a process of it just experimenting and then slowly building with you know some better equipment and and so on and so forth and um so I did that for a while and sometimes I'd go on location and get some some shots as well and you know coming from the, the ballet career I knew a ton of dancers and um for me it was fun because it kept dance in my life mm -hmm. and um so that was fun so I did it for fun. Um, and then back in, oh my gosh, what was the conference year? Was it 2020? Yeah, the first one was 2020. Yeah. So then I went to Pata de conference back in 2020 in Phoenix, Arizona, and really excited about meeting a lot of the instructors um, and other people who had the same interest. And that was amazing. It was like the Disneyland of dance photography, I called it. It was super exciting. So took classes, got to meet Rachel Neville and, and Taylor and, and all these photographers who I've been looking up to forever um, and taking these classes, learning a lot, learning how to light, uh, just, you know, all of the things and came back completely excited and decided, I actually had the, the opportunity to open up my own studio. Somebody was actually 
releasing his studio and his business. And I thought, you know, this is a really good time to give this a try. And so adopted the studio and, um, and COVID hit literally like three weeks later. Right. So, yeah. So, um, somewhat of a blessing only that it gave me an opportunity to get into the studio, set it up, experiment, learn so that by the time I was able to officially open the studio up, I was ready. I was really ready and excited. And the dancers were really ready and excited. So um, that was yep, back in 2020. Um, and since then, I've, I've been shooting uh, not only professional dancers, but students from all over the place um, have come to me for their just fun portraits, creative portraits, as well as their audition shots, um, so on and so forth. So, um, and now I've got schools interested in working with me as well. So learning a little bit more about um, not huge volume shoots, but volume shoots. Right. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of, kind that's of the a, path in a nutshell. <laughs> pretty exciting. I mean, it, you know, it, it sounds like you, it, it, it's really taken off from you just in the last couple of years, you know, for you. Absolutely. Honestly, since 2020, like it just, things started clicking, um, having the space to experiment, getting real equipment in real lights, um and 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 figuring it out and i mean to this day every time i shoot it's still a learning experience but um yeah it's become so much fun I, it's just you know i'm still running a pilates business on the side but it's kind of now my photography business is kind of taken off so um so right now it's a matter of finding a balance between the two um but yeah i'm having a blast and like i said i'm really fortunate and that i've got there's amazing, you know, dancers here that that want to collaborate, and that's what it's about. It's about the collaboration. Yeah, party da, party da, exactly, exactly <laughs> right. It's such a great name. Um, so, what what about your mom? What kind of role ha has she played? You know, once you started taking more pictures. That's a really good question. She's the one that really pushed me into uh, developing my own business and studio. She's had faith in me for many, many years. She told me, if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it there. You know, don't wait, get in there. Um, and so she's been a huge supporter of mine. And she has, in fact, she was with me in Phoenix, just hanging out, you know, kind of watching behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, but she's, she's so proud of me. And she's so excited about the whole, the whole studio business. And yeah, she's my number one fan. So oh, that's <laughs> pretty awesome. fun. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, what I want to do now is like start bringing up uh, some of your pictures, you know, like uh, right. I'll kind of describe for the grand prize competition. What happens is, you know, our, our, um, our, the entries are in each of the different categories. You know, we had seven categories this year. And, um, and so as long as somebody enters at least five, has five entries, um they are entered into the grand prize and with the grand prize they look at your full body of work and um and the one that they de deem to have the best body of work becomes our grand prize winner and that was you this year wow um, it was a shock i'm i'm still reeling from the experience i'm very <laughs> excited thank you what, what what was it like when you know when we announced that you were the winner what was that first thought <laughs> it was pretty funny actually because i you know, I was seeing the photographers going up one by one who were being announced. I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, he's amazing. She's amazing. Like, oh, of course, you know, and, and then, you know, it was up to like number four and then three. And um, we're, 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 at that point, were you like, oh, I would have yeah, at that point, I'm like, hey, what can I do better next time? What can I, how can I make this? Yeah. You know, it's just something that I, I, I did not imagine that I would have been one of that, you know, the ones being called after that number, you know, five or four slot. So I started, I started recording because I was right there, started recording um, the announcement. So I thought, oh gosh, whoever gets this is going to be, you know, I was pretty front and center. I was like, they're going to be thrilled to have this, you know, and, uh, and, and so you were announcing that last one and all of a sudden you turn towards me and you're like Jennifer Curry Wingrove. I'm like, what? <laughs> you just kind of see the camera like 
So, I, I, I mean, I did not expect it. I was thrilled. Um, and I mean, there's nothing more validating, right, than, than something like that to validate that you're on the right path and that it's, it's hard being, it's hard being a photographer looking at your own work. You don't know. You're so, you're so, you know, enmeshed in your work that it's, it's hard to pull back and, and say, okay, no, is this, is this good? Am I, and, you know, am I, am I on the right path? And so again, it was just, it was very validating. And it was amongst people that I look up to and that, you know, I love, and it was just, it was an amazing moment. Yeah, that, that was, it was really cool. It was really fun. It was pretty emotional too. It was pretty emotional. Honestly, again, like I'm shaking just thinking about it. Um, the validation that came with it was was pretty intense and and I was very emotional. It, it like I said, I mean, this whole my whole career, my whole dance career, my photography interest and passion all just kind of came to that moment. And uh, and it was it was so fulfilling and so rewarding. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I'll always be grateful for that moment. <laughs> And I, I think it, it says a lot, you know, like with your story about, you know, I mean, I know you've been taking pictures really like in your studio for 10 years, 10 plus years yeah. or whatever, but, but, you know, it seems like you really got serious about it in the last couple of years. And, and that's what it kind of goes to show is that, you know, it, it's not something you have to get serious about, then wait 10 or 15 years to get really good at. If you really right. commit yourself, you know, you can really be impactful as a photographer within a year or two. Absolutely. I mean, at that point, I was hungry. I came out of that conference hungry. And I just, I researched, I, I, you know, the only way to become a good photographer is just to practice, 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 practice. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and I did a ton of portraits, you know, most, like 99% of them were trade, you know, <laughs> bringing a dancer in, collaborating, mm -hmm. um, giving the dancer images of his or her choice, um, and, and just figuring that out. And now I have dancers, uh, like I said, from from um, from different schools and companies coming to me and actually paying me to do it. And I'm I love it. I love the collaboration. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it just is a matter of how bad do you want it, you know? And if you yeah. do want it, just just do it. Don't wait. Just do it. And and then part of the process is turning in those Home Depot lights and getting some proper. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. In fact, some, it's funny on Facebook memories come up. And so I have a few memories coming up back in like, you know, 2011 or 2012 of my right. portraits. And I look at it and, and back then I was like, oh, is, you know, there's, these are, these are pretty good. Like there's yeah. something here. And I look at them now like, oh boy, <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere and you just exactly. have to keep doing it. Yep. Yep. And you have to believe in yourself too. Yes. And again, that's always the hard part, right? But um, you know, yeah. You know, the other thing I want to talk to you about before we start looking at your pictures is um, the transition of being a dancer and then becoming a dance photographer. You know, there's a yeah. lot of dancers that, that want to be a dance photographers and some of them do quite well. And, you know, not all of them do as, as well as you do. And then, and then there's also photographers who don't have any experience in dance you know, like myself, for example, sure. you know, but you become so enamored with dance that you really learn it. What was it like for you? And you obviously you had the help with your mom and the background where you had the interest in photography and dating all the way back in high school and, you know, all that time. But what was it like for you to make the transition from dance to dance photographer? Was it easier because you knew dance or... Good question. Um, I would say yes, it was easier than I would say someone who doesn't come from a dance background only because I know what the lines should look like. I know what that moment to click looks like. Um, even watching, like doing a performance photography, for instance, um, which I do time to time. Um, knowing that if you do a tombe pod regularly sod, it's probably going to end up in a grange de tay. Like just knowing as a dancer what those movements look like and where they they apex, where they climax. Um, so yes, I think that helps a lot. Um, also, knowing when a dancer is just striking a pose or when a dancer is emoting into a pose to me makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, so having that sense of expression 
through the collaboration rather than just like strike a pretty pose, you know, bring a pretty tutu. Um, it's as a dancer, there's a lot more to it than, than just that. So yeah, definitely, I think it helps. I think that people that come into dance photography not really knowing dance, definitely need to study dance, study, you know, not only the terminology of the, of the movements, but what makes a dancer a dancer, you know, watch, watch videos of performances and things like that um, to get a sense of what those, what those moments should look like, what those lines can look like, so on and so forth. So, so definitely. And again, it really has kept me because, you know, as a, as a dancer, the artist in us never, never retires. We're always an artist. We're right. always dancing in our soul. So to be able to keep dance through photography, you know, in my life is, is a pretty amazing thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm one with a dancer as they're, as they're modeling for me, for sure. Cool. Okay. Well, let's start bringing up uh, some of your images and start talking right. about them. Okay. And we're going to start with uh, in, in the fine art category. Um, we're going to, we're going to go to, um, another one that actually took 10th place. One of the things that you did really well is uh, you had so many images that, that, um, that placed in the top 15 in different categories, top 20, top 30, you know, you were all over the place in <laughs> categories. And uh, I think that's what made it such, made you such an obvious choice for the grand prize winner. Mm -hmm. um, you have another image that's gonna be coming up later. I think, in, yeah, in your studio portraits, one that took seventh place. You know, they had like this yellow background, but, you know, I, I just kind of want to start with this one before we even go to that one. And that is the colors, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and the texture that you're using here in the background. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. So this is Miss Kalia. She is one of my my models I work with frequently. Um, and as you can see, she's got a real sense of of how to play with a camera. So she's always fun to work with. Um, I loved the yellow backdrop here with the yellow flowers. However, I wanted the sunflowers to stand out a little bit more. So I decided to go with a texture. And for me also it was an experiment. Like I don't use texture very much in my photos. I probably had taken, may have been Bill's class. I have somebody's uh, online class with Padada during COVID. But anyway, just experimenting with adding texture to uh, a photograph. So that's what I decided to do here. Um, and I like the way it turned out. It gave it kind of a vintage look, I think. Um, but this whole past year or two, I've really been experimenting with color in general. Um, so I think that's kind of where we went here. I definitely wanted more of a spring look and, uh, and that was the result. Cool. Well, I love it. And I, I do agree. It's sort of like the way she's playing with the camera. You just, yeah. there seems like to be a little playfulness here, you know? Playfulness. Works, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to take us right now to the uh, image that did place in 10th place in the final. Uh, yes. Right? Preston. Yeah. yeah. So this is interesting because um, I had just, well, this past workshop, I took um, one of Lois's classes, which, oh my gosh, I took actually any class I could from her. But one of her, her classes was called, um, I think in the pursuit of the perfect moment or something like that. Mm -hmm. But what and, and, she and, was and talking I did, about- I just wanna clarify, when you say Lois, we're talking yeah. about Lois Greenfield. Lois Greenfield, um, yeah, I just assumed everybody knew who Lois was, but yes, Lois Greenfield, amazing, who I grew up looking at. I grew up looking at her books and her postcards and her calendars. Anyway, so she was talking about not only the importance of, of, uh, of coming up, of a jump, but also the importance of that moment where you're floating and just starting to come down. And that's what this picture captures, is that moment where, the dancer is just starting to float down. So that's how you see the movement in the, in the shirt as it's being lifted up a little bit. And I remember this is before Lois's class, during this photo shoot, experimenting with that. I kept capturing him on the way up, on the way up. But then once I accidentally waited a little too long and he was coming on the way down, I thought, well, that's amazing. That, that's a much more interesting moment to me. And it looks like he's levitating. Yeah. So I think that's what I got out of this shoot is 
is it's not always on the way up is, you know, the perfect moment, but capturing that lightness on yeah. the way down could be really interesting as well. So that's, and then I just decided black and white was definitely the way to go for this image. Oh, it works really nicely here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Lois talks a lot about like, it's not the peak moment, it's the moment yeah. just after or the moment just before. I mean, right? It could be different each time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a lesson learned, right? This image re represents that right there. Okay, let's move along over to your locations shots. Yeah. And this image here um, took eighth place in the on location and uh, it, as you can see it's it's pretty amazing you know that's uh you know you're pretty lucky to have a sky like that and, and oh man that was a fun day so that's tyler i work with him as well um professional dancer and just an amazing human being overall so this was great because we had just done a few hours um i had a few dancers with me at the time we had done a few hours inside the studio and uh, we were doing the last part of our studio session. And I was just like, guys, I was like, let's just get out of here. Let's just get outside and see what's going on. And we walk outside and we see the sunset with these glorious clouds. And I thought, oh my gosh, let's just, and this was so spontaneous. I said, well, and I'll look around. It was on a Sunday because I usually shoot on Sundays. And um, I said, well, let's, let's climb up to the roof of the photography studio. And uh, so we did. So we're literally like, I have the camera on and we're climbing. Safety first, by the way. But anyway, we're all being safe. <laughs> Climbed up to the top of the roof. And then, of course, we see a security guard that starts to like drive by. And we all like, we just kind of hunker down. We're like, just, just wait till he comes, you know, he, he passes just in case, you know, we don't want to get in trouble. So he passes and then we come back up and and one by one, the dancers, I'm down on the ground like this, you know, really down low. And the dancers just start jumping. And it was just one of those moments we were not only having so much fun, but the, the, the sky was glorious. The moment was glorious. And uh, I actually captured a few images of a few different dancers from the shoot. But this one really, really, you know really hooked me in and um at first it was completely silhouetted i went ahead and decided to bring up the shadows and i was so impressed with what i saw that i went with that and so i went with bringing up the shadows and you can tell it's grainy but i think it kind of it works like it just works for me oh it totally so yeah works. that was yeah. that was a fun literally a fun moment yeah, that i captured I I can see that this would be a nice silhouette, but I think yeah. like bringing out and showing his muscles and his body, yes. you know, yes. I think it just takes it to another level. I agree. And that's why I went with that, that, um, that direction. So yeah, it's a, that was a fun one. And then it worked a little bit with, you know, dodging and burning here and there, but um, that was just one of those magical moments. Yeah. Those happy accidents. So let's go ahead and talk about this image now. This was a top 30 image. Nice. And, yeah. And I, I presume this is at a, at a beach there at San Diego. Is that correct? Yeah. So this is Kalia again. And the funny thing is, is we went down to Scripps Pier, which is a very, 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 very popular place for photographs, uh, photographers to meet to photograph their subjects. So there was literally a line at the at the pier. And, and to be honest, I did capture a few moments um, at one point, but then at another point, I'm like, you know what, let's just move like <laughs> I don't I don't want to have to compete with all these other photographers. And this is another moment where it was already pretty darn dark. And I had one flash coming, one stroke coming from her, her, um, well, her hit the side of the head. And um, and did also decide to bring up the shadows here as well. But I have so many more photographs from this session that are pretty amazing that I need to go through. Um, again, I was collaborating with an amazing artist. So at some point she's actually in the water with a skirt and all sorts of things. But I just love this moment of, again, it's a levitation moment. She's mm -hmm. just dynamically suspended in the air and, um, I love even the, the craziness of her hair. And um, she was wearing a really cool leotard that looks like a stained glass window. And it just kind of worked with the whole environment. I thought very dramatic clouds. I mean, it wasn't that perfect sunny 
or right. even like right. partially clouded, cloudy day that you hope for on the beach. But um, but I went with it and we were there. So we just we had fun. Yeah. And, and, and you added a light to her. And the thing that I really yes. like about it is that you can't really tell that you added a light. But, you you know, in terms of like how it hits the rest of the environment, but you can tell on her. And, and that's hard to do. Yes. Like thank that. you. <laughs> very much in fact that one i actually brought a strobe not on a stand this is the first time i brought a strobe on one of those um like you hold the umbrella up with just like a a pole mm -hmm. so her mom is literally holding the strobe and uh as she's jumping so her mom got to work out that day too i think in the world of dance photography uh our dancer moms kind of help out a lot on these. Shows. They're pretty amazing. Hope <laughs> is her mom, and she's yeah, she's she's amazing. Shout out to Hope. <laughs> uh, that's very cool. Okay, so now we're going to move over to your series, and uh, I'll just start with this first series here. And this one came in thirteenth place here. Okay. Um, this guy. Tyler here. again. Yes. Uh, I love working with this dancer. He just not only is he expressive and and you know just willing to try anything. He's just gore. I mean, he's he's so musculature and that, he's mm -hmm. muscular, and I love photographing that. I, I was experimenting on this one. I was really trying to um, work with contrast, shadows, mm -hmm. um, sort of thing. So again, this was this was a this was me learning how to photograph muscles and make that 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 tone evident um right, in the right. dancer so you know, and, the, and the thing is not everybody knows really how to do that and, and and to show you know be able to light them and then look at these muscles you know what i mean yes you it's know? all about rim lighting <laughs> for sure so, yeah so, so in this it's pretty evident you have one light camera left one light camera right yes okay. and i'm trying to remember if I had the one above him on the boom, I may have had it on a tiny bit. Yeah. I'm looking at his hair. Yeah, I know. I'm or that could have been too. just like, yeah. I, I, I think it was just the two lights. I, you know what? I think it was just the two lights. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. Yep. And the angle of those makes all the difference, right? So oh, completely. all about playing with that. And again, for me, it was just kind of a learning experience too. You know, the thing is, like, uh, for people who are just learning how to do this, it's it's sort of like you have to do what you just did, which was experiment. And, and, and if you don't do that, you never learn, you know? Absolutely. And, and, and the whole idea is you have to fail a lot before you start succeeding. <laughs> yes. You have to be willing to fail. Yeah, you have to be okay with that and, yeah. and take it and learn from it and uh, move on. Absolutely. Yes. And then we have like another one here. Now we're going to go Tiffany, yeah. We're going to go completely different lighting because we're going for a completely yes. different look. Absolutely, and of course I'm using contrast colors. I put the purple in front of the orange mm -hmm. purposely to work with that. And she, this model is such a great improver. Like you just you just let her go, and she'll she'll start <laughs> moving. And and um, and I was just capturing different moments of that movement. And. Uh, yeah that was a lot of fun do you, do you find like i do anyway i don't know i don't know if everyone feels that way but but um i find that uh there are two types of dancers one that needs choreography that needs direction <sighs> and then yes. others it's just like it's, it's sort of like you just turn on the the button and they just start going you know and it's almost like sometimes we have to rein them back a little bit absolutely and it's funny i was talking to Lois about that as a matter of fact. And um, cause I was, I had the, the opportunity to get my portfolio reviewed by her, which is great. So we had a conversation about, um, about improv with ballet dancers versus improv with dancers who are a little bit more contemporary or lyrically inclined or, you know, dancers that have had more experience in more freedom of movement whereas ballet dancers are very often used to being told what to do and where to pose and how to do it so um it's 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 a it's a gem when you find a ballet dancer a professional ballet dancer who's able to also just freely express and move without the constraints of of you know a lot of what these 
the, the ballet movements are. Um, Tiffany knows more than ballet. She also is a hip hop dancer, a jazz dancer, a, you know, so she is much more inclined to be able to move, move freely mm -hmm. um, and be okay with it, you know? Um, it is, yeah, it, and they're, again, I mean, you've got dancers coming to you saying, okay, now what, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to pose? Um, I love working with people who are more able to just collaborate and, and do what feels good and then just sit back and capture moments of that. Right. And, and it really doesn't always speak to their level or ability. I've, I've had the most True. fantastic dancers have come in and they just, and, and, you know, and I'll start talking to them about what they want to do for a pose and they'll say, I don't know, what should I do? You know, yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. it sounds like you're going to have to give you a lot of direction, but, but yeah. then they do it amazingly, you know? True. Very true. Okay, so then we had this other uh, ah, one. Vincent, yeah. yeah. So and this Vincent is, is yeah. this one, wait a minute. This one took ninth yep. place in our series okay. category. So go ahead, okay. talk about Vincent now. Yeah, so Vincent is a tap dancer in San Diego. And um, I forgot how we got into the conversation, but he had mentioned the fact that he had these shoes, these tap dancing shoes that had LED lights attached to them. And I was like, well, uh, bring them in, let's play. We've got to capture something. And so again, this is just having him. No, I take that back. We started with improv and then we, tr and then we started figuring out what worked with these shoes. Um, and so we started just working with, you know, those dynamic movements that we figured would work well with the lights. Um, and and extended uh exposure so yeah and then a strobe right so how how did this one work i mean i I'm, i know i'm trying coming to, okay. up, down and then back up it's almost like he's floating so, here across the i street. know i love this like yes so what okay i if i remember correctly the strobe happens right as you press the trigger Mm -hmm. And then you kept the the um, the aperture open for an extended time afterwards. That's how I did it. So oh. he, I don't even know. It's so confusing to me. I'm trying to remember this one. How did it, like I caught him first and then somehow he ended up going the opposite direction, but I don't even know how that Well, you know, there, there's, 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 two, <laughs> there's two ways of doing it. One, one is that, that uh, you know, it, it, it opens in the beginning, you're, you know, right. like, like you start capturing the image and then a flash comes at the end. But it sounds right. like you set it up so the flash came at the beginning and then yeah. you continue to capture it. Yes. And so it, it intrigues me that that the trails are coming, it looks like from the direction that he's coming from, but it's honestly, right. I think that the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Really fun <laughs> stuff. Again, just experimenting yeah. with exposure. Yeah, and the beauty or, um, of it is it's, it's kind of like a mystery, if you will. And that's yeah. kind of the, the cool thing is sometimes it's yeah. just like, it's cool just to leave it out there and just like let everyone try and figure it out on their own, you know? Right, right, exactly. You know, th this is another one that's kind of like that as well. But, you know, yeah. you can see his foot just swings around over there. So Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Fun stuff. And then you had this. And then that was him. Yeah. He was just right there. You're just stopping and thinking about, okay, how am I going to make this work kind of thing? What's next? And I just thought it was such a lovely moment. So I clicked it. <laughs> yeah. So that, that sometimes those are the coolest moments. Is oh, where, man. When they're not even yeah. aware that they, they're getting their picture taken. And exactly. The in between moments, the, so the real moments. Is there any ambient light happening at all in here? Like, you are, are you able to see them a little bit or what, what was it? No. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I do have, I must have some ambient light probably coming from above. And then of course the strobe is coming from his, you know, his right cheek. And it was a very, very, I didn't have very much light going on because I really wanted to capture the LEDs right, as much as right. possible. Yep. Um, my mirrorless uh, shoots in the dark so much, captures the target so much better than my old Canon 5D Mark II. So I shoot now with a Canon, uh, Canon, what am I saying? Six, R6. R6, yeah. <laughs> I just stop and think. The Canon R6, um, <laughs> which has been such a nice, nice camera to have. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's move over to the studio portraits. Okay. And this one here took 13th place. Okay, yeah. And, uh, Miss you know, Kalia this, again. Yeah. yeah, I love the energy in this shot. Use of fan, or it could have been a leaf blower, probably. Yeah. Um, that, and that, she's wearing, favorite. yeah, leaf blows are fun. Um, yeah. She's wearing a costume that I wore, actually. That's the Athena costume um that I wore for an aerial dance show that I had created um I have all these gorgeous costumes, and that's the other thing about coming from the performance world you've got I've got tons of costumes and leotards and skirts and like dresses and vintage dresses what do I do with these put them on my models and that really does attract um clients I have a lot of younger clients coming to me saying, you know, I heard you have pretty dresses and skirts and tutus. Um, I don't really have anything at home. So I would love the opportunity to wear something like that and get a portrait done in it. So, I mean, it's again, it's dress up time. It's play time. So much fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And I, I like how like this, this is like an energetic shot. And yes. to me, the lighting is like really it just goes in line with that because it's so well lit and, you know, it's bright and happy, you know? Yes, a little more high key, yes. So I'm just kind of moving over here and seeing these ones here. Um, this one there we go, here, yeah. This one here took seventh place in our studio portrait category. That bright yellow backdrop again. I had just gotten that backdrop. I'm like, I'm using it. Um, again, but you see contrasting colors. You see the blue in front of the yellow and mm -hmm. the pink hat. I just love the energy, the colors here. We were going for a beach vibe, you know. Oh, and she had brought that leotard. I didn't even have that leotard with me. And she brought it out. I was like, oh, I have an idea. You know, let's go. Let's go beach kind of look. And is, um, is that it your worked. Hat or is that her hat? That's my hat. I've got a yeah. few hats too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tricky things about hats, of course, is trying to get the face lit, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that um, there is probably some dodging there. But uh, yeah, to make sure that those eyeballs can be seen, unless you don't want them to be seen. I like the shadow look too with the hat, mm -hmm. but definitely trying to light the dancer and making sure that the face is seen there. And you know, that's what I, that's what I love about your work too, is that you go from bright and happy here to dark and contrasty you know <laughs> focusing on the body you know and you know so so you, you're not locked into one style of shooting at all thank you yes no that's important to me that one just won um that Which one was, right there uh -huh. morello right here just won um with the ppa san diego um it won a, a merit an excellence award um they really like the fact that with it they thought it was um, risky to put the subject in red. I love putting subjects in red. I see, sure. I mean, I, but they love the fact that the red didn't overwhelm him mm -hmm. and that the face can be seen. They thought the lighting was really good in this one. Again, it's a lot of rim lighting, could be just rim lighting. I feel like there might be a little fill somewhere, but, um, but yeah, that was a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Playtime. Yeah. yeah. So that piece of material is actually one of my aerial silks um, that is used for aerial <laughs> uh, circus kind of stuff. And um, I was inspired by probably Lois on this one. I just wanted to kind of think outside the box and do mm -hmm. something different and fun. And I'll tell you what, lighting, lighting groups and lighting different skin tones is definitely a challenge definitely a challenge yeah. um so that was another learning experience for me um yeah we just kind of one of those things i just said okay just start playing around with it i gave them kind of an intention um and i this could have been a series i actually have about eight really interesting photos in this one that are all very different yeah so, and it, it, this yeah. Does, does very much look like one of Lois's, you know, yeah. as it goes in line with what she does with groups. Yes, yes. Here's another one. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Ava, paid client. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I started getting, you know, my 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 students coming in, and and that's actually my costume I put on her, and 
Um, she wore it well. She had a lot of fun that shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's just look at one yeah. more. Sure. Tiffany again. Yep. Yep. I had that fun skirt. I was like, you want to wear it? She said, yes. <laughs> and uh, we just had some fun. Of course, lighting the, the skirt. You want to make sure the skirt is, is seen as well. Um, yeah. And we went a little bit more structural there for her. A bit more ballet oriented. But mm -hmm. she got to wear her point shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because you know like like we make these decisions about okay are we going to light the background and make it white or not yeah. light it and keep it gray you know and these are choices that you know you have to make artistically you know each time and another thing i'm i'm you know lois thank you for everything lois actually had said take your picture with the white background and then take your picture with it not lit like just you know see what works better with your model and as a matter of fact i did that with her with tiffany and i decided to go with um a less you know bright backdrop for this one and it, it worked very cool yeah. so so uh you know um let's go ahead and you know that that's that's you know, we've, we've shown quite a few of your pictures and talked yeah. about them now. So yeah. we're back on again. And, um, you know, uh, I, I guess you've already like received the, the, the light kit from uh, Light in Motion. Yes, I cannot wait to use it. Yeah, so I have a, uh, my first continuous light um, that I get to, that I just received. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to using that and seeing what, I think that'll be, it's, it's a real nice light. Mm -hmm. uh, light as well. So um, I think location shoots, that'll be great for a location shoot. So yeah, yeah I'm excited about that. Um, uh, also the the editing services from, um, is it Roku? How do you say it? Yeah, yeah I'm excited about that. And yeah, and then, oh my gosh, the all the prints that were done up of all the winners, yep. the metal prints were just beautiful. It just reminded me that it's really important to print our stuff up. We don't do that. We do a lot of social media posting. Well, some of us don't do that. So, yeah, you, Others yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's really encouraged me to start printing my 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 work up, and yeah. um, it was really fun to see it all done up like that. Yeah. Yeah, it, you, you know, just along that lines, you know, when my clients come in here, you know, especially if it's the first time. They just stop, you know, before we even go into the studio and just start looking up and around at all these pictures and and it it's very inspiring for them, I think, you know. And, Absolutely. and, and for some they, they they set a goal of okay, I want to be on that wall, you know. And and uh, that's great. That's great. No, it's it's inspired me to do the same. Yeah, very cool. Um, so you know, what's next for you? You know, like 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 um, you know, since you've won the grand prize you know uh, what what does that meant for you in terms of like gigs coming up or yeah so already it's been paying off um i just got invited to go photograph the yagp finals in tampa florida very excited about that it's gonna be a lot of work but um i'm going in confidently um i get to photograph from the side stage they really liked the fact that I am a dancer um, and they liked my artistic vision. So they are putting me on the side to capture the dancers from the sideline, which I love that to me is exciting. That's that's where I belong, you know, like the side stage. Um, so got that, that, I have that's 10 days, right? That's 10 full days of right. shooting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll be exciting. Um, and they did. I, I'm like 90 percent sure they they found me because of of the um recognition so i appreciate that um and i have a couple of schools now that are wanting to work with me so Very dance cool. schools so uh learning a little bit more about you know my forte is portraiture but learning a little bit more about um not huge volume shoots but you know a little bit smaller volume type shoots so mm -hmm. and yeah. are, you, are you doing any kind of workshops too with the local and i should be doing relatively soon um a dance photography uh, workshop with the local uh, photography store here in San Diego, Georgia. So yeah. um, they're interested in bringing me along. So I am putting that together and looking forward to passing on some knowledge. Very it's nice. weird to think I'm on that side of it now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Well, that's, that's what happens when you start becoming a grand prize winner. So yes, yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Very cool. Um, do you have any like uh, tips that you want to share with someone who, you know, is just starting off in, in, in uh, dance photography that, mm -hmm. you know, might help them move along? I mean, what I said before, don't be afraid to just jump in. Even if you make mistakes, that is the only way to learn. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to the community, which has been developed through Pas de Deux, uh, Photo. It is amazing to me how supportive the community is. If you have any questions, any doubts, any anything that you need um, answered, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Um, and, and just have fun. Have fun. I mean, play around. Yeah, Great. go for it. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for being a part of this. And, My absolute uh, pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, and so uh, hopefully uh, we'll see more of your images in the next photo competition. Looking forward to it. I've already started collecting them. So yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ron. Bye bye. Yeah.